Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Extracellular Vesicle Club. We're coming towards the end of the year and we're also coming up on almost 200 um, of these EV clubs that we've had. And today we're gonna be talking about parasite EVs and specifically about some guidelines, very nice uh, work that was put together by a series of, uh, of parasite EV experts from around the world. And we're joined today by three of uh, the actual three corresponding authors on this paper um, who are going to be uh, talking with us about the guidelines and will be available also at the end of the presentation um, to, uh, to, to answer your questions. And um, so, so as, as most of you know very well, it's not just mammalian cells that are making EVs. In fact, EVs are made by every, every organism that we've, uh, that we've come across so far. Um, if you find one that doesn't make any EVs, that would be also very exciting. Um, but um, but uh, I, I'd just like to welcome Carmen, um, Martin, and also Anna, um, who are going to be presenting today. So, so Anna, I see that you're going by a different name today, but you are indeed Anna Torresilias, are you not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will. Um, I'll hand it over to you then. And just before I remind the audience that um, you can put your comments and your questions in the chat box, and we will get to you then at the end of the presentation. So, Anna, over to you. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night for all colleagues from UD Club. Thanks so much, Kent, for invitations about it, to talk today about our guideline, how to purification, characterization, extracellular vesicles, isolate from the parasite. It's a big challenge for many groups to work with this. And for us, it's an honor to talk today our guideline because we are a, a very good team with very good work together to put our ideas and many other groups around the road to communication and exchange experience about this, this guideline. Thanks so much. Sergio Schenkman is the name of the person to co-authors to in the, our guideline. And Dr. Carmen Fernandes, Dr. Marta Olivier and I, we correspond the author from this paper. The, we write together this guideline. This is my colleagues, my close friends to work together to put our ideas and to help people in this uh, guideline. First of all, is uh, how this started the idea. I started to uh, talk about the history, about this, how this idea we put in our mind to start to work our guideline. First, in 2016, can Wither invite us to organize me, Dr. Rodrigo Soares and Patricia Chander to organize the workshop here in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, in Latin America. And the name of this workshop is the first thing in South America is a cross-organization communication by extracellular vesicles, host microbes, parasites in Sao Paulo. After this, the people, when I close the wrap-up section, the people, why not to start to put in the paper the meeting report about these EVs from the microbes? And we started this idea. As you can see here, uh, a lot of the PIs work together to put our ideas in this uh, meeting report to publish in journal Excellar Vesicles. After that, uh, every year I attended the meeting in the ICEF. And this is a, a picture about our group and the students to put together this esforce to publish this meeting report. As you can see here, Ken, I, Rodrigo Soares, my colleague, Marca Weber, Patricia Chander, our students, Antonio Marcila, Hernando Del Portillo is here, uh, Marcel Ramirez. Uh, we have a lot of friends here, and a lot of collaboration authors in this guideline, but this focus this uh, uh, meeting report and the workshop to discuss the problem to tropical infected diseases of public health in Latin America. And now with the climate change, you need a lot of infection disease around the world. For this, uh, the people, uh, they organize in the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles, the rigor and standardization to be committed. We, as you can see, you visit our homepage in the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles. You have a lot of text force to understand 
how EVs modulate, how purification, how characterization, how the best way to work with EVs from cells, from blood, from any urine, and our text force in the con conditional media here. And if you click on your visit to our homepage, you found these parasite groups. These parasite groups, we have a lot of PIs, students, and postdocs to work together to write these guidelines. As you can see here, this rigor standardization and this the share uh, Juan Manuel Falcon in hand to organize can Clotilde, for the person to ICEF to put a lot of force to work in the rigor and standardization tax force. It's very important in our field. And Martin, Carmen, and I who have an idea to work in the tax force in EVs in parasitology because the parasite is contained different shapes. Depends the vector, depends the different host. That some parasite you need to maintain in vitro, but some parasite you isolation from animals or patients. And some parasite then depends the EVs, the size, depends the specific markers you found. And Carmen, uh, from Associated Research from ICA Global and University of Barcelona. Me, associate professor from Federal University of São Paulo in Brazil, Carmen from Penn, and Martin from McGill University, full professor and McGill University from Canada. We put together our ideas, but it's, it's very hard to write the guideline. Imagine the MySAF, the, the new MySAF now on the, the publish, but we have a lot of ideas. How to start? How to invite? How many types of parasite you put in our D in this guideline? Is possible? Is not? We work together for more than one year and a half to write this guideline. We have a lot of discussion, we are brainstorms, discussion about this. How the guideline contribute to leave this isolate from the parasite? This is our way the communication for many, many groups around the world. And the Carmen and Martin and I, you have a very good team to work together because you have different ideas, but you have the same, the same goal. How the rigor and the standardization to isolate EVs. This, we publish this, but we invite a lot of people around the road, as you can see here. Martin is a coordinator in Canada, in North America. We have Lisangela, he's a Brazil, she's a Brazilian. Christopher Fernand Prada is from Canada. Igor Correa Almeida is US. Our team here, Miss Dr. Sergio Schenkman, Patricia Schander, Rodrigo Adriana, Vera and Marcel Ramirez. You have the excellent team from Portugal, Annabella Cordeiro and Nuno. We have the Spain, Dr. Hernando Del Portillo, Carmen, Dolores Bernal and Antonio Marcilla, Neta Regueve, Ziv Porat. We have the excellent PIs and teams and students for each group to contribute to this more than seven pages and eight tables in our guideline. As you can see here, we published this year you as you can see the uh, the uh, you found this paper uh, in this guideline in journal Accessory Biology is an uh, is this very good to see this to follow you have a lot of examples to tables how to purification the specific parasite how the specific markers from the parasite is very important in our field in this protozoas and helminths parasites but. What about the diseases? It's very complicated to isolate this parasite. How spread the parasitic disease around the world? As you can see in North America, you have a lot of uh, diseases uh, like river, like uh, malaria is very found here, Trypanosoma cruzi. We found a lot of infection disease in Latin America, as well in Africa, in India. It's, it's is very big problem, but the climate change is 
exchange the vectors, move it to US, move to the Africa, to Europe, and is more devastate in prevalent infections in the world. It's a billion cases per year, and the people die. In the several millions of people die. You need to focus to understand the parasite host interaction, how to treat it. It's possible to develop any therapy and use this, or use or development any vaccination for the billions, billions of people to infect this disease. And we have a big challenge here. But for, uh, for us, it's very glad because increase the number of publication to use EVs and parasitic infection. It's very good because more groups work to EVs. One the reason our proposal to publish this guideline to isolate EVs from the parasite disease to rigor and standardizations to for many groups work more in this EVs and parasite field. For this history, this is the first figure. The people from here, University of Sao Paulo, Dr. Franco da Silveira, he's a PhD student, now is a full professor in my university. He's isolate EVs from the Epimash Goats farms, isolate from Trypanosoma cruz, the parasite agent causative of Chagas disease is the first figure for the electronic microscopy. And, but the people don't believe the parasite release vesicles. I'm glad to EVs now, I'm glad to have a society to help us and support this, our research, no? And how the importance from the parasite in human parasite EVs. As you can see, humans like is schistosoma or facile hepatica. You have the plasmodium toxoplasma bond, Giardia trypanosoma leishmania, or trypanosoma cruzi, or brucei, and all parasites release vesicles. But the functions in intercellular communication, use, as you can use the therapeutic approach and potential isolated this from the biomarkers in patients. Carmen Fernandes, she's a specialist in the therapeutic approach and identify EVs and biomarkers in the patients from malaria and trypanosoma and Chagas disease. And our uh, organization for our guideline, you split from it is protozoa parasite in helms. I don't talk every details, but if the people interest to discuss more with us, please contact us. But we discussion isolate this from a lot of parasites because it's the big guideline from parasite, this parasite isolation. And you have trypanosoma, leishmania, toxoplasma, um, and you have the proteist like entamoeba, trichomonas, giardia, and helminths like fascicula, schistosoma, mansoni, tenia, ascaris, and more parasites identify in this, uh, uh, not in all parasitologists work another type of the parasite, but this is a very more complete parasite from protozoa or helminths parasite. But this function of EVs isolate from parasite, for example, uh, Leishmania, Martin is he's a specialist in Leishmania EVs, is a immune modulation the host, promote infections. For example, in the Trypanosoma cruz, in my, my field, I work in the Chagas disease, immune modulations, and we found the biomarkers Carmen worked too in this field. Toxoplasma gondi is a toxoplasmosis we found the function to EVs modulate the host immune system, immune modulation too. You, you see this EVs isolate from the parasite is very important to modulation the host and interactions. We have the plasmodium, the agent causative from malaria, uh, its control is ev evade from immune system, parasite, parasite communications, differentiation, seat adherations. The helmet is the same function, immunomodulations, amoebas, 
parasite communications and moon modulations and in, in vitro we found a lot of protease activities. And trichomonas vaginalis, e, trichomonas is not is an intracellular parasite, but it's very important to interact with plasma membrane from the whole cells. And giardia, modulate and persistent the parasite in the host. This is a big function for the EPVs isolation from each type of this parasite. And we have this uh, workflow about the checkpoints because it's very important. We have the parasite inoculation. How many types the parasite you need to infect or inoculation in model in vivo or in vitro to infect the cells? How the viability of the parasite is very important because you have the like exosomes or whole population from EVs. The media, free vesicles. You don't use the FBS. You need to find or deplete these EVs from the FBS. It's like cells. And the temperature, some parasites live in the 37 degrees, the other parasite, 28 Celsius degrees. And you need to select what kind of the parasite, what the uh, in life cycle of the parasite, we need to find what the best temperature to work because the pen release more or not EVs. No, is intracellular parasites. Some parasites split proliferation in the cytoplasm of the whole cells, but some parasite not. Some parasite you need to inoculation in animal model and isolate this organ or circulation, the parasite. And you need to pay attention to the life cycle of the parasite because it's very important. Depends the what, what kind of the host is the human or not, because you need a lot of mosquitoes. You need a lot of vectors to transmit the disease and the parasite proliferation in each phase for this life cycle. But after the checkpoint, you need to work to EVs enhancing the purification. You use the standardization methods like ultracentrifugation, the chromatography set, gradient centrifugation, affinity capture of EVs, immune precipitation, immune filtration. Follow this, you need to check the quantification of EVs isolated from the parasite. And you have NETA, protein and lipid quantification, flow cytometry, you have a lot of the uh, methods to quantification EVs and characterization. This characterization of EVs isolated from the parasite is very important because you need to see these EVs. You need to show the parasite release EVs. And you can use the nano flow cytometry, the image flow cytometry, flow cytometry, cytoflex. You need to transmit electronic microscopy, cryo AM. You, you, you need to characterization with the specific markers. But the parasite express lipoconjugate totally different from the cells. You need the production because of, uh, some parasites don't have the commercial antibody against some markers. You need to produce the polyclonal or monoclonal antibody against specific markers in the parasite. And they look in the Western blot, dot bot, or ELISA if this express these specific markers and compare the proteomic, lipidomic, metabolomic, acid nucleic analysis. And after that, when you hold these characterizations is okay. You move to functions as say to see the, our questions. This EVs, is possible to control the host interactions, spread more infections, up regulation or down regulation the host immune system. For this, you have studies in vitro, in vivo, animal, vector, and patients. This is our workflow to our guideline and I support this idea to study is very good rigor and standardization in our group. And we have a big challenge to study this field. One is the parasite has a complex life cycle. We have the host, parasite, and vector. You need to decide what your question, what your hypothesis to work. Because the some parasite 
is an extracellular parasite, no infect the cells, host cells. But the sun parasite is an intra or extra parasite. You need to decide how the, in life cycle of the parasite, what kind of the parasite. For these parasites contain different markers for each other, different uh, uh, sequence to uh, found in the host. And it's our challenge. We have this and discussion a lot in this guideline. As you can see here, I don't explain, I'm not parasitology class at university, but we, as you can see here, in Trypanosoma cruzi, you have the complex life cycle. In fact, this uh, vector, striatomineus or hodinus, is a vector to transmit to human in life cycle and transmit in the parasite in blood, in, in acute phase, in chronic phase, move it to organs. We have the plasmodium is an agent causative of malaria. You have the mosquito transmission here from human stage and the complex. In the first, you found the parasite in the liver, Depois move after move to the circulation in the organs and transmit to cerebral malaria, transmit the mother to, to fetus. It's very big problem. Leishmania. Leishmania, you have the dog stage, you have the sandfly stage, you have the human stage. It's very complex. And the facile hepatica from the helmets, you found in this water, and transmit the human is big, very big challenges in Latin America, South America, this infection. And the complex this is parasite is very complex. You have a lot of different glycoconjugates, proteins, and lipids to interact for each phase from the life cycle of these parasites. And for example, in the Martin Olivier group, this uh, found this exosome secrete from the protozoa leishmania in the mid-gut from the uh, vector, the sunfly. Is this very important work to understand how to isolate in the sunfly? Is possible or not? It's very big problem because the parasite contains exosome together and it spread this uh, infection in the animal model, in the human too. And this, the first time this paper showed this Leishmania exosoma in the mid gut for the sunfly. Is possible to work this? Yes. But here, our group, I don't publish yet, but as you can see in the scan electronic microscopy, the triple mash gold sperm to infect the human stage, Chagas diseases. As you can see here, this EV is isolated from the triple mash gold sperms. We show the parasite release vesicle. This parasite, this temperature is at 37 degrees. If you look here, the leishmania, when the release of this, you have different uh, Celsius degrees to maintain types of the parasite, the pro goats and the amash goats forms, depends the infect the macrophage or not, and is still in the sun fly. The sun fly for the human stage is completely different. You need it to a sweet the temperature, and as you can see here from the uh, scan, uh, scan electronic microscopy, the leishmania release vesicles, and it contains these like exosomes to release. And you, as you can see, another example for to work, this parasite infected to the virus, as you can see from prior AM, these leishmania exosomes contain or uh, the, the virus and, and modulate the host immune response. This unpublished paper uh, is a figure from the Olivier team, but it's very important to see this. And our checkpoint, I use the purification here. As you can see, and I propose, the ICF proposed many papers from uh, published to if this is very heterogeneous. And the composition, you have a, a lot of subpopulation of EVs. As you can see, this is a, a lot kind of this for sizes, markers, and functions, or work together. But our challenger here is this heterogeneous need to study the biogenesis of EVs in parasite too. And you can, a lot of isolation methods, I don't explain each methods, but in the group work with EVs and parasite field, 
use the differential centrifugation, density gradient, size exclusion chromatography, uh, ultra centrifugation or precipitation, immune capture. Uh, the group of Carmen, Dr. Hernando Del Portillo, has a lot of experience to immune capture to uh, isolate bees from the plasmodium or the patients, and the tangential flow FFF to split how many populations this parasite it releases these or cells, but we use it to, with uh, FFF, the uh, asymmetric flow field plastonation, and we can identify these EVs. But this is a, 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 a we published with Neta Hergev Rudinsky, you, as you can see from this plasmodium release EVs, and as you can see, this use this uh, uh, machine to uh, split the population of EVs. For example, in Malaya, we found two different populations of EVs, like Trypanosoma cruzi. We, my group, use the same method, but you put in the, our guideline these suggestions too. If you have uh, these questions, how many populations this parasite release, as you can see, to use this, or if you have the specific markers, you use the immune capture to isolate a specific population to EVs. And this is a big, big charge for us. For example, for malaria, as you can see here, it's possible to maintain the parasite in vivo cultures. In the malaria mouse models, we have, but it's very big challenger because uh, you need to use the animal. If you use plasmodium vivax, humanization, the animal model, but you have the what type, uh, different type of the plasmodium to infect the mice. But as you can see here, you as you you can use the same methods to how if you isolate cells to use the parasite. And this uh, our goal in trypanosoma, leishmania, uh, and malaria and helminths infections or toxoplasmosis from isolated from the patients is very important. But some approach you need to isolate this from patients. But you have a lot in the hospitals, the public hospitals is in Latin America, as well in the Central America, Africa, or Asia to isolate the patients with the malaria infections in the Amazonia as well in the Central America here in Latin America. This is figure out how to use EVs isolated from the parasite. And this is uh, implementation, this uh, circulation in vivo from plasmodium vivax patients. Carmen Hernandez and Hernando Del Portillo has a lot of experience to uh, capture these EVs circulants still in the plasma or serum from the pa patients infected with plasmodium. It's very important because when I performed the proteomic analysis, we found a lot of proteins important, the parasite spread infections. And as you can see the same figures from the patients, the number uh, of identified proteins, we have the, some patients who have more, some parts depends what the, the phase of the disease depend of the type of how many parasites infect the human, but increase the detection of the parasite proteins in circulation vis of the patients infected with the plasmod. It's very important to use the specific protocol to isolation vis and perform this experiment to isolation and characterization these EVs. And the bio, biogenesis and markers is very big challenger too, but you move to understand this. Uh, the biogenesis of EVs, I don't explain this, but we have in the parasite like Brucei, Leishmania major, Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypomonas vaginalis, intestinalis, you have the scorch components present in Trypanosoma tides. And our group with Dr. Sergio Schenkman, we perform some experiment to use CRIPS-Cas9 to uh, study to biogenesis of this. It's a big challenge in Leishmania, in Trypanosoma brucei, 
and, this, and, and the Moab Stolitica because the scorch machinery is very important. The tumor cells in Trypanosoma cruz, you have a lot of questions, but you move to experiment to uh, knock out uh, parasite. And the, we have a project to study these EVs from this parasite. And the Moab Stolitica is very important to, to trafficking to EVs and phagocytosis and invasion of this parasite. In the uh, Tempranosoma brucei, the Shulamita Michaelis show the renovation, ubiquitination of the proteins is very important. But our focus should understand the parasite release of this, yes, but how many populations, in the, how the biogenesis of this in the parasite? This is our goal to understand how to modulate the parasite host interactions. Is possible or not? Yes. And this is a proteomic analysis from the Trypanosoma, Bru uh, Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypomash goats form, in fact, a human in life cycle. Is you find a lot of glycoconjugates to induce the interactions and escape of the proteases from the host, induce the immune system and spread more infection and inflammation. And for ETVs from the parasite, you found the specific markers from the proteomic analysis. It's possible. We have a lot of people uh, working in, in proteomic, like Martin Group, Igor Correa de Almeida in the US, and many groups in Europe, and Israel, and uh, Europe too. And you have very good results about the components. And these EVs is reflected the plasma membrane of the parasite. But the modulated immune system, up or down regulation, is possible to spread more infections if you pretreated this uh, animal model and infected. How to follow, how to understand this? In our guideline, we use this system to understand how this parasite is still in the macrophage, live, and don't die because the leishmania down regulation the system and the spread more infection and proliferation more. On the other hand, in the Trypanosoma cruzi, monocytes when incubation with EVs we spread to move, to extend completely the morphology to macrophage. It's very important because the migration, the parasite from some organs like heart, spread more infections and microphase move to heart and modulate the immune system in the host during the chronic phase. And the parasite adaptation to the host environment, this answer, yes, is very important because when a pretreat parasite, uh, the animal model, if it is isolated from the parasite infected, we increase the infection in the heart. And the, the EVs isolated from the parasite in some parasite spread more infection, but not control. We have a lot of questions about this to basic science, but the guideline to isolation is you have the good discussion about this way. And the leishmania induce and transmit from the sunfly and they spread more infection and macrophage and induce the, this exosome with leishmania induce more infection, but down regulation the macrophage. Some molecules expressed in EVs help the parasite to spread more infection in leishmania cases. And as you can see here, Martin and I and Sergio Schenkman, Christopher Prada published this review about this big questions from the mechanism the EVs involve the host parasite interactions. The parasite release EVs increase the infection and spread more infections. And if you look at the insect vector, the parasite with EVs spread more proliferation and the leishmania increase the inflammation, increase the infective and leishmania, exosomes from parasite and the virus spread more infections. And it's very important to understand these mechanisms. Why? Because if you, our group or many groups found the biomarkers in the human diseases, 
vaccines or therapies help a lot of millions and millions of people. It's very important to work to understand the basic questions and if these are the functions is communications, up or down regulation the host immune systems. This is cartoon Carmen published in the Sci Global to spread her research and she's identified if is isolated from the chronic Chagas patients and exploring new biomarkers. And she said, Fernandes Bezerra, the protein presents in the extracellular vesicles isolated from the parasite before treatment, but decrease or disappear after treatment, represent the potential biomarkers of therapy response and more students, more patients are needed there to validation. We have the light in the end of the tunnel to understand this disease. And thanks for my colleagues for this, because it's very important. And this is a proteomic analysis to use it, just to identify the uh, Hernanda Portillo and Carmen group, use these extracellular vesicles isolated from plasmodium, vivax and liver during this infection in animal model. As you can see here, you isolate these EVs and they associate in this phase of the disease in animal model, the biomarkers of these EVs. And our conclusion in our perspective, we have the excellent uh, workflow to isolate EVs, but pay attention for the separations protocols, combinations protocols, increase a chance to purification these particles and the quality to perform the functional assays. You need to do big questions to hypothesis. You have the isolation, the very, uh, is a poor particles from the parasite. Water is a, you need to be re reproducible in the labs we need to talk more our group for another labs to reproducible. Generation artifact is not good and misinterpretations. You need to use the very good quality of the protocols to purification, isolation, to move it to functional assays to understand this big question about the host parasite interaction. But on the other hand, you have the perspectives, new protocols, to combination, you need to understand the, the biogenesis is to understand how the parasite is modulating the host. Use the new, new technology, CRISPR-Cas9, to available to understand these mechanisms to particles to release and maybe modulation more. And in the other uh, perspective, to identify the biomarkers in the, vis, in the new vaccines, this uh, impact the, the diagnostics and prevention, the infection disease caused by parasite. This is our goal and our conclu conclusion and remarkable for this uh, guideline and help our colleagues to start or work in this EV field in the parasite. And I have to thank, I have to thank for all parasite team to Patricia, Daniel, Jorge, Iris, Edith, Medar, Melissa, Nicole, Nuria, Paula, Paula Meneghetti, Rafael, Ziv, Rodrigo Soares, Adriana, Sima, Anabela, Nuno, Christopher, Marcel, Dolores, Antônio Marcila, Vera Chocola, Lisângela, Hernando, Neta, Igor e Sérgio Schenkman. Because if you don't have the very close team to believe this idea, Carmi, me, and Marti, I don't possible to publish this guideline in EVs and Parasite. Thanks so much. Well, thank you, Anna, and thanks to Carmen and, and Martin for also joining us today. Um, it's really great to see how these guidelines came together um, and what you're doing really for the for the global community um, in Parasite EVs. So, um, so thanks so much. And I know um, I'd like to just emphasize to everyone, if you do have comments or questions, um, please just put them in the chat box. 
And, you know, one um, one of the things that we've seen here in the chat box, actually, and I'm, I'm going to highlight this because our YouTube audience will not will not necessarily see the chat box. But we have a really great um, tribute here that was put in uh, by Phil Askenaz, um on some work that was done all the way back in the 1970s on helmet DBs. So, Phil, I'd like to just invite you to um, to tell us about this work and about you know what was uh, what was known about some secreted factors that were that were influencing things um, e even at that time. Well, this is a long time ago. Alan Shear, who's probably known to many of you, recommended I work with Bridget Ogilvy, and we worked in vivo and in vitro mainly with helminths, uh, and they had this sort of gooey, gelatinous, lipidy stuff on their surface. And she said, "Don't wash that off." Uh, and then we would add that to cultures. And we were interested at that time in uh, the interaction with the host basophils and uh, mastels. Uh, this is a, a huge, fantastic area, uh, which we'll all learn a great deal about the universality of EVs in intercellular communication. You didn't have the chance to mention the microRNAs, which I, I think is a uh, a, a, a very since they are universal between the parasites and the host, uh, they, you have so much to do. Uh, but this is absolutely wonderful, wonderful, necessary work that is generally not recognized by the human-oriented uh, uh, scientific community. Well, thanks so much for that, Phil. And indeed, there's so much diversity. We heard from Anna about how there are um cellular pairs and intracellular parasites other parasites that exist outside the cell um, and all the different phases of the life cycles it's really uh, there, there's really a lot of uh, fascinating work to be done there and what what about that um that topic of the rna um for our three corresponding authors you know some some organisms there are a few organisms that don't have the traditional microRNA machinery um, but many, many do. So, um, so, 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 where are we with uh, with microRNAs and perhaps other RNAs in in EVs from parasites? Uh, if I can, I, I know that the, several years ago Neil Reiner showed that they were able to identify the different type of RNA within the exosome of Leishmania. And on our side, we are doing RNA seq from uh, with ex of the exosome that we isolate in different contexts. So, it's it's there for sure. Yeah. Yes, also also in malaria, NetRegist have present several work, several reports showing that uh, there is microRNA in falciparum. Uh, most of the work has, has been done with this parasite because we have the mitro culture. I work, I work especially with Biva because it's more difficult because we don't have the mitro culture and then we depends of the uh, plasma sample from patient and this is more tricky because you are. And you have Emilie that the reason with that we have been working a lot in, in trying to implement methods that allow us to really select the subpopulation of EVs coming from the infected reticulocytes in the case of uh, Plasmodium vivax. And it's quite hard. And now that we have been working a lot in identification of protein, but the next step now is to, to look for those microRNAs in the in the EVs. Not only my microRNA, there are some words that have shown there are some messenger RNA that is also very interesting and then something that we want to look, but apparently there are always a, a small or short messenger RNA. I don't know the capacity of the EV because I always thinking how this nano vesicle is able to carry all these things inside because it has been shown there are proteases, everything, but probably as, uh, as Anna mentioned before, is the mix of food population of EVs that probably they, they, they Car the cargo is different depending on the, the type of the side the, the, of the cells and, and of the, the the parasites and then it's quite quite difficult no as a, I, we would really want to point out that the, in other field you have the EVs coming from the particular cell but here you have the cell the parasite inside and also the virus inside of the parasite and then mm -hmm. I think it's really more very complex no the the, the, the world. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, and, and we have a question here from Anand about how big um, those mRNAs might be. Are they full length or are they a spliced version or a sliced version? I don't have the answers. 
the answer, but uh, we, we have a project, we studied this to move. We identify RNA in the disease isolated from the state of the parasite, Spanosoma cruz, in the human state. But I don't perform yet this experiment to, uh, the, to discover this. We need to more, uh, conclude this uh, project. We have the grant, the, our question is, to identify and the classification of this uh, population of RNA in these EVs isolate for the triple mash goat sperms. Fantastic. Um, Antonio, Antonio Marcia, I see that you're, you're here. Um, you have a comment here. Tell us about this study that you did in 2014 or that you published in 2014 about the microRNAs. Well, uh, actually, uh, hello to everyone. Actually, it, it was something related to the to the <laughs> To the um, uh, comment that uh, Phil uh, already uh, did, I mean, we were investigating the surface of another uh, helmin that is called Dicocelium dendriticum, and we found out that uh, there were a production of uh, extrasolar vesicles in there. And actually, we detected for the very first time the presence of uh, small RNAs on, on, on those vesicles. Uh, mm, I mean, uh, Nowadays, uh, there are some uh, studies uh, using those those uh, microRNAs and um, checking whether they are involved in the infection and also in the uh, maturation or uh, evolution in the same uh, helminth. So there is a uh, extraordinary uh, good uh, feeling for for uh, investigating for doing research in this in this topic. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Antonio. My pleasure. Um, and and just to, just to clarify, you you responded to um, to Phil's comment saying that these uh, these helmets really do release a lot of EVs. So so have you seen differences in in rate of EV release um, be, uh, in, in in different conditions or you know when when do you think that the helmets are more likely to release EVs? I mean, we were really lucky because we were working with flatworms, I mean, uh, fasciola and dicocelium and uh, echinostoma, that they release a, a huge amount of vesicles because they use not only vomiting then, but also uh, using the, the, the tegument, so the surface. But uh, it, the opposite, maybe uh, uh, also uh, other people working with nematodes can could, uh, support this. The problem with nematodes is that they only send out the, the vesicles by vomiting, by secreting them, but they cannot cross the the cuticula, the, the cuticle that is a very thick uh, space in the in the nematode. So depending on the worm, you can find easily the, the vesicles and uh, maybe you can reach uh, a huge amount of vesicles when the, the uh, helmet is in, in a stress situation, because maybe uh, it now he's dying, or it now uh, he had to to uh, prosecute the, the the horse or whatever. So uh, the 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 helmet just produce a large amount of vesicles in, in this situation. When you stress them, uh, they secrete a lot. But the question is quite different depending on the helmets. Mm, yeah, yeah, and and of course, what your your answer here is also highlighting, I think, the importance of different markers and um, how there might be a different set of markers that are needed um, for, for, for the, uh, obviously, for different organisms, um, but al also because they, they have these different release um, mechanisms and possibilities based on their, on their, um, <clears throat> on their biology. So uh, let's see, let's go to, um, oh yes, and, and Anand has also asked about the list of antibodies and Carmen has kindly um, answered that question here in the chat box saying that in this guidelines paper, you can actually find several several tables for the different parasites, including the main antibodies and markers that are used for characterization. So this is a really valuable resource um, for those of you who wanted, want to do some work in this area. Uh, Samuel Blankson, um, you have two questions here. Would you like to uh, to ask those of our of our presenters today? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Samuel, as you mentioned. I'm a PhD student studying at the uh, Université Paris Cité in France. So uh, very often people are not. Uh, it looks like there's an overlap between uh, the range or size of. Uh, exosomes and uh, microvesicles or ectosomes. And when you read a lot of papers, some will say for exosomes, probably start from 30 to 100. Others will say uh, from uh, 50 to 
100 or 150. And for micro vesicles, they will say probably from 50 or 100 to uh, 1,000. It varies, but is there a clear uh, uh, size range for each of these two, two sets of uh, uh, micro vesicles? And then secondly, with the Dyna bees that you mentioned, because I work on EBs from malaria, but uh, my focus is mainly on P. falciparum. But uh, in the diagram you show with the Dyna bees for extracting EBs using the magnet uh, coated antibodies that are with antibodies specific to the tetraspanning proteins like CD71. I use one recently, and after elution, you have your magnet still attached to the extracellular vesicles. And with that, it becomes very difficult if you need to do a functional study because sometimes it can affect the morphology of the EV. So I want to know how you can separate the bees from the uh, EVs in order to carry out further analysis. Thank you. Thanks, Samuel. Um, I guess... I guess I'll start with a um, this distinction between the different classes of EVs, and I agree with you. It's a it's actually very confusing in the literature when you read about these different size ranges, and um, and 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 actually, you know, I think a lot of this goes back to some historic um, di differences in different communities that were stud studying EVs um, using tools like electron microscopy on the one hand, which a lot of cell biologists were using to look at exosome production and release, you know, from the multivesicular body versus some of the groups that were looking at larger, larger vesicles, um, using, uh, methods like flow cytometry that were not so, um, you know, not so sensitive to the very small particles. So, so, so now we know, at least from mammalian cells, that there is, um, pretty much complete overlap at the small end of the size range. So in other words, you can have a very small vesicle that is budding from the cell surface um, that can be just as small as an exosome um, that's coming from the interior of the cell. Um, so these size ranges, I think, you know, are there are limitations for sure. But let me ask the team here, um, what about with parasites? Is there a, um, it, is there a difference in the smallest size that can be released from the surface of a parasite versus from internal compartments? And do we really have this same exosome, ectosome um, uh, distinction that we should draw for parasites uh, versus mammalian cells? If I can. I don't yeah. know. Uh, Martin, go, go ahead. I will, yeah. I will answer so, to uh, the dynamics. Uh, the other I question. With, yeah, with lesmeamory, we found in a way that for sure it's very difficult. We we name them, prefer not name them small vesicle, but for sure, one way to discern uh, that we found is that we did some uh, CRISPR cast, we uh, knock out the skirt pathway in Lashmania, and we found that there was a very strong reduction of many of the small vesicles. And when we did the proteomic analysis of the different thing, we can see that the the proteomic landscape of the vesicles release, whether they are ectosome or escort dependent or escort independent is very, is very different. So uh, it seems there's some kind of, uh, I mean, selection of uh, depending which pathway is used that uh, what the vesicle will contain, whether they are exosome. We assume that escort uh, dependent one are exosome and uh, based on the size, but also the fact that they are known reported to be uh, produced that way in, in many eukaryotic cells. Yeah. And of course, just hearkening back to Antonio's uh, comments about the the different you know biology of some of, of I mean we're talking about a great diversity here, so there are probably some organisms that would rely more on on one mode of um, of production okay. than another. Um, and and uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Martin, another comment. Oh, it's okay. In fact, in fact, it's an illustration. I think it must be the same thing. To find people as well, but we found also, and many people also when you do TEM. Sorry, is that you have many vesicles going out to the flagellar pocket as well? Mm. Because once there's an MVB attaching there, or it's another mechanism, but at least for sure, when we observe MVB formation in the parasite, uh, in the context of the escort knockout path uh, parasite, it's uh, this is greatly reduced. And also, uh, as I said, the vesicles. So there's different ways they are produced, but um, I'm sure different parasite may they must use all of them because Lechman is very ancestral paras pathogen, right? So uh, for parasites, so uh, they must reflect what's happening in the uh, other one as well. 
And uh, let's go to that second question from Samuel. Carmen, I think you had an answer there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wanted to ask to this. Uh, I ask about the the dynabits when we are using to immunocapture some particular subpopulation of EBs. Uh, as I mentioned before, in our case, working with a plasma sample, you need somehow to to remove this confounding that are coming from the rest of the of the uh, EBs that are coming from the rest of the cells. And in our case, we were using CD seventy one, the, the transferrin receptor that was described in the exosome because it was one of the classical, not when the exosome was described. And for, to, to identify parasite protein from vivacs is, I think, in our hands uh, has been working really well for proteomic. No problem. You don't need to remove the dynamics. And I was, we were also a little co concerned about what to, to use. If, are we able to use those EVs with the bits to do functional assays? And the, the answer is yes, because we tried to remove them, but we lost a lot of uh, EVs. And then we decided to do the experiment, just check if there is an, any affectation. And for, for instance, for banding assays with the parasite site and a spleen cell that has been stimulated to, or incubated with those EVs with the bits, no problem at all. And even in, in Chagas, I'm doing some experiment in which I has been collected the uh, uh, EVs for uh, circulating the uh, EVs from the plasma of patient, different use, different data spanning, also linked to different uh, to bits. Uh, and we have done uh, angiogenesis experiment that uh, has not affected at all for all the, to the to the experiment. And I can say that you can use to 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 do this kind of uh, assay, functional assay, without removing the bits. Samuel, do you have a follow up on that, or does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my. A worry for me because I needed to do some interaction studies with the EVs on maybe endothelial cells. So I was wondering whether they could work uh, because in the uh, manual that I was using, they said it can sometimes change the morphology of the EVs and can have, uh, you couldn't use it for some functional studies. So for me, I wanted to find out whether we could separate the bees or whether they can work fine. So I will try it out and see. Yeah, try uh, someone and the, the, the good thing or the tricky thing is just to have the right controls. And always we use uh, health, uh, EVs isolated from health individual, for instance, EVs that or, or bits that the has with the antibody that has been incubated with the PBS alone, just to be sure which is the effect of the only E bits to the to the to the bit, sorry, to the to your function, particular functional assay. But uh, use the right using the right controls, I think you will have an answer. And in our case, I have sent in two different experiments, binding assays of two spleen fibrolas and angiogenesis using endothelial cells, and we have uh, not seen any uh, uh, bad effects or side effects. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe Thanks. a suggestion to produce the good antibody against the parasite to identify these markers to the parasite in EVs isolated from the patients. Because we, we publish, you identify some markers, the parasite in EVs in the patient with chronic Chagas disease. If you have the good antibody, because you, you don't have to buy the commercial, don't find, you need to produce this. You need to identify some markers, the parasite in the EVs, in the serum or plasma from patients. It's a very good approach. Controls and good antibody. Thanks, Anna, and good luck with the experiment, Samuel. So last question goes to Anand today. Really nice question here at the end. Yeah, uh, do you want me to ask the question, Ken? Or do you want yeah, to yeah please go ahead. It was a great talk, and I also work on something similar, but my system is not a parasitic one, it's a non-parasitic system, and I work on regeneration. So my question is, a lot of these platy helminths and helminths, um, uh, got it, they all tend to secrete a lot of vesicles from their body. So the question is, are the, the, are the secreted EVs different from what they retain inside their body? Have you tried to profile it differently in the helminths? where the infectious ones, uh, the infectious EVs have been secreted out and the healthy ones are kept retained inside. Do they do that? Or is it just like a one process? And when you when uh, when um, uh, Antonio uh, mentioned about uh, nematodes uh, vomiting uh, EVs, does it actually mean by literally vomiting or just like, again, is, a, is, it, a, is it a secretion from the skin, uh, from the epidermis, which comes out? Maybe Antonio want to answer. Antonio, well, are you there? Uh... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, hello. Uh, the, the, uh, answering the, the first question, we haven't done yet the, the I mean, we have uh, localized the, the vesicles inside the tissues of the, of the parasite, of course, but until uh, very recently, there were no protocols just to isolating those vesicles from tissues. So we plan to, to do it uh, right now, and uh, we check that maybe there are different populations of vesicles depending on the on the source. And uh, there were some paper published by uh, uh, Mark Robinson and colleagues that they uh, established two different ways of producing uh, those vesicles in, in, in flat worms in fasciola hepatica, either uh, from the uh, tegumen and either from the vomiting. And regarding the second point with the nematodes, of course, they could send some vesicles outside in the, in the in, I mean, the skin, the, the cuticle. Uh, maybe Peter can answer it. I, I saw that Peter Nexon was already there, but um, uh, they secrete very little amount of vesicles uh, transcortical. Uh, so most of, of them are vomited or spitting by, by, by the worm. So they had to, to culture those nematodes for several days and many uh, nematodes at the same time. Same time, just to to get a little amount of vesicles to to study with. I mean, uh, that's that's the that's the point. And uh, Martin Martin spoke about uh, EVs from flagella. Do you mean like EVs are secreted from the flagella, or they uptake the flagella? Because I have seen a lot of ciliary EVs in my system. They are released through the flagella package. It's a way that the parasites secrete things. But the things that we see by electron microscopy, same thing with the cruzy, we see them sometimes accumulating on the flagella itself. But the thing, uh, they are not capturing the thing. But well, they can capture depending how you look at it. Because when we did the, uh, uh, we showed that LR1 virus, and the virus was, was uh, found in the vesicle. Not that those vesicles, I mean, can transfer the virus to naive uh, leishmania parasite. Same thing for drug resistance with the transfer of Amplicon we did with the Christopher Prada. So, I mean, there, there, there's contact. In there. But in general, what we see going out, it's only going out, not going in through that uh, flagellar pocket. Yeah. Thank you. This is a great talk, everyone. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks Thanks for those questions, Anand. And, and thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, but the biggest thanks to Anna, Carmen, and Martin for uh, for preparing this article and then also for sharing it with us. So um, hope everybody has a great rest of the week and we look forward to seeing you at an EV club uh, coming up soon. So thanks everyone. Good luck with